Welcome. In this video, we will discuss um, some of the tenets and basic concepts of pathology. Um, to start with, if we look at the Latin root of the word pathology, it comes from two words, logos and pathos. Logos means study, and pathos means suffering. So in Latin, um, the word pathology means the study of suffering. So we will uh, embark to study or to review some of the basic concepts of suffering. Um, some of the words that are used a lot in textbooks and by pathologists are as follows. We have here etiology, morphology, and pathogenesis. Etiology is the cause. So when they say what is the etiology of you know diabetes, it's what is the cause of diabetes. Um, Morphology, you can view morphology or talk about morphology from a gross perspective or a micro perspective or a microscopic perspective. A gross perspective refers to what is the tissue or what is the appearance of the sample or whatever they're talking about if from a naked eye point of view or if I had it in my hand or if it was on a, a tray on a table what what's the gross appearance what does it look like with the naked eye microscopic experiences is, is or appearances what does it look like under a microscope how do I describe what I'm seeing if I'm looking at the tissue under a microscope pathogenous refers to the mechanism the mechanism <clears throat> the mechanism of kind of the process or what are the steps so a you know equals b or you know is converted to b converted to c converted to d so the pathogenesis of diabetes is first this which leads to this which leads to this and then which leads to this you know or or any disease so the pathogenesis if we understand the correctly the pathogenesis of any pathology you know is we're trying to figure out what are the kind of the steps and the goal of medicine is to figure this out and then you know put a treatment you know between a and b or b and c or c and d to hinder or stop the progression or actually you know sometimes to either to even reverse you know so if we had to reverse um, the disease that would be the best best case scenario so I want to talk a little bit about um, a concept um, that most of you are probably familiar with um, but it's just good to homeo it's good to review homeostasis some authors prefer to use homeodynamic um, rather than homeostasis but homeostasis is so you know if I had a little cell here and I had the nucleus here and the DNA inside and then I had a mitochondria over here you know all the organelles organelles is simply what's inside the cell <clears throat> excuse me homeostasis is every cell has a uh, kind of a set um, standard or function if you will it, it's its job is to perform a specific uh, a specific function and if you apply a stress to a cell some kind of stress, um, whether it be chemical, physical, uh, any kind of stress that will kind of put pressure or, or, or push the cell to do one thing or another. Homeostasis is kind of the set standard of the function to kind of return to take care of the stress and then return to its normal functioning. Homeostasis is an attempt for each cell to kind of maintain a, a set standard or function. <clears throat> With that in mind, I want to 
po uh, review this uh, picture here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have something in my throat. Um, so we have here a normal cell, okay? And it is maintaining homeostasis or homeodynamics, depending on whatever, you know, you like to say. And if the cell is stressed or put pressure upon the cell to act in a certain way, the cell is going to adapt, if it can okay and it will adapt to that environment to that stress and there's four ways that it's talked about that the cell will adapt and we'll discuss those later in some next videos if the cell has an inability to adapt if the cell can't adapt to the stress that's applied to it the cells gonna be hurt it's gonna be injured somehow and <clears throat> <clears throat> we'll talk about all the ways that cells can be injured or damaged. Another way that will lead to cell injury or the cell being damaged in some way is if there's some event or, you know, some kind of, yeah, event that, that is injurious to the cell. For example, if I'm riding my bike and I fall off my bike and I hit, you know, slide on the cement, my skin cells are definitely going to be damaged. Uh, they cannot adapt to that kind of stress, that kind of pressure and, and force, so they're going to be damaged. I'm going to bleed and all kinds of stuff. So that that's definitely cell injury. When the cell has, by the way, this picture was taken from Robin's um, Basic Pathology 8 edition. Uh, Kumar is the author. Uh, it's a great, great textbook. So the cell, from the cell injury, the cell kind of has three scenarios by which it can follow. One is if the if the damage to the cell is a, at a below a certain threshold, the cell can um, revert back. Or if it's a reversible cell injury, then the cell can revert back to um, revert back to its normal homeostasis. It can go. It can go back to homeostasis stasis if it's below a certain threshold. Now that threshold is different for every cell, and we'll talk about in the future kind of, we don't know exactly where the thresholds are at. We can, and you know, that's another point of medicine. If we understand where the threshold of um, reversible cell injury is, then we could be really good at saying, oh, well, you're, you're past the point of no return, I'm sorry, or we could say, oh yes, we have really good chances of helping you. Um, so that's kind of another reason why we're trying to understand where this threshold is at. But if you pass the point of, of no return, if you will, or the point of irreversibility, uh, you undergo a, the cell will undergo a process of necrosis. Now necrosis equals cell death. That's what necrosis is. So if we pass the point of no return, our cells will die. And we'll discuss the process of necrosis and how that process is different than apoptosis. Okay, My undergrad physiology professor loved the word apoptosis. And he always used to discuss and talk about apoptosis. So apoptosis is, is cell death, but it's, um, it's organized. Um, the cell death, it's, this is an organized process, this is an unorganized process, and we'll talk about apoptosis, but it, it, some authors also talk about it as kind of a cell suicide or programmed cell death. This is just a clean way for a cell to, um, to get rid of itself or, or die out of the cell population. So if the cell is injury, injured, it can either go through apoptosis and kind of kill itself in an organized manner to um, you know if it's if it's not good anymore if it's not you know f performing its proper function then it will it will die out if the cell is damaged uh, below this 
threshold, this point of irreversibility threshold, then it will revert back to homeostasis. If it passes this point of irreversibility, it will go undergo the process of necrosis. And we'll talk about these processes um, in, in depth uh, later in other videos. And another option is you can undergo subcellular alterations. Now this would be like changes, changes in DNA, uh, this little symbol triangle is in science sometimes can mean changes or change. So changes in the DNA um, are, are some examples of subcellular alterations. You can have, um, you know, each cell is, is has a different shape and there's structural proteins that kind of hold the shape of the cell. These structural change proteins can. Um, can be altered in some way so the cell instead of round it may look like this or something that you can have just changes in the cell structural proteins you can have changes in the mitochondria which will affect um, ATP uh, for those that don't know what ATP is this is the currency of energy so like in the house you know we use watts or kilowatts you know when you get your power bill they say you use you know X amount of kilowatts that's how much energy you use well in the cells they use the energy of ATP and you know I, I could talk about I could make a video on ATP and how it's produced and where it's produced and all that maybe I'll do that in another video but for now ATP is just kind of the energy currency if you will of each cell so we'll see you in the next video